We will approach the squat in two phases. First, unloaded, to solve problems associated with the bottom position, and then loaded, to learn how to apply the bottom position to the hip drive used for heavier weights. Since the majority of the problems with the squat happen at the bottom, this method expedites the process quite effectively. We will use a fairly neutral foot placement with the heels about shoulder width apart and the toes pointed out at about 30 degrees. Many people will assume a stance with toes pointed too forward, so you may need to point them out more than you want to. Next, you are going to assume the position you will be in at the bottom of a squat without the bar. Squat down all the way to a position in which the apex of the hip crease drops just below the top of the patella. Put your elbows against your knees with the palms of your hands together and shove your knees out. Notice your feet are flat on the floor. Your knees are shoved out to where they are in a parallel line with your feet and just a little in front of your toes. Your back should be as flat as you can get it. Also notice that your back is inclined at about a 45 degree angle, not at all vertical, and your eyes are looking down at the floor a few feet in front of you. After you've established the bottom position, come up out of the bottom by driving your butt straight up in the air. Up, not forward, not back. This movement keeps your weight solidly over the whole foot instead of letting it shift to the toes. Think about a chain hooked to your hips, pulling you straight up out of the bottom. Set the rack height so that the bar is at about the level of your mid-sternum. Take an even grip on the bar, measured from the markings placed on the bar for this purpose. A standard power bar has 16 to 17 inches between the ends of the inside knurl and 32 inches between the finger marks. Grip width for the squat will vary with shoulder width and flexibility, but in general, the hands will be between these two markings, with the narrowest grip you can manage. A narrower grip allows a flexible person to better support the bar with the posterior muscles of the shoulders, and a wider grip allows an inflexible person to get more comfortable under the bar. The thumbs should be placed on top of the bar so that the wrists can be held in a straight line with the forearms. The elbows should be lifted up to trap the bar between the hands and the back. Elbows should be up but not high. With your grip in place and your hands and thumbs on top of the bar, dip your head under the bar and come up into position with the bar on your back just below the spine of the scapula, the bone you feel at the top of the shoulder blades. And then secure it in place by lifting your elbows and chest at the same time. It should feel as though the bar is resting on a shelf under the traps and on top of the posterior deltoids. Take the bar out of the rack in the same position in which it is to be squatted, with the torso and shoulders tight, the chest and elbows up, the head positioned down, and both feet under the bar. Step back just enough to clear the rack and assume the same stance you used earlier. Again, heels should be about shoulder width apart, with toes pointed out about 30 degrees. At this point, you are ready to squat with the empty bar. Everything you're about to do is the same as you did unweighted. Only two things are different. One, you don't have your elbows available to help push your knees out. So you need to do this with your brain. And two, don't stop at the bottom. Just go down and immediately come back up, driving your butt straight up, not forward, not back, out of the bottom. Now, look down at a spot on the floor about four to five feet in front of you. Take a big breath and hold it and squat. You should be in good balance at the bottom of the squat, with your weight balanced evenly over your feet, neither on your heels nor forward on your toes. Balance problems usually indicate a back angle that is too vertical. Remember that the back angle will not be vertical at all. Sit back, lean forward, shove your knees out, point your nipples at the floor, allow your hips to perform the squat not your legs. Do not accept anything less than full depth, ever. If you are high, it is usually because your knees are not out. Most people who have problems with the squat do not shove their knees out enough. Do a set of five and rack the bar. 
Walk forward until the bar touches the vertical parts of the rack. Find the uprights, not the hooks. You can't miss the uprights, and if you touch them, you'll be over the hooks. The general plan is to do a couple more sets of five reps with the empty bar to nail down the movement pattern, and then add weight. Do another set of five and keep increasing in even increments until the next increase would compromise your form. And that is the first squat workout. <music>